Well, today is a good day because today the rain has stopped probably just for a short while, but it stopped. And today I'm out for the day in the 2019 Alfa Romeo Giulia Veloce, which is a 280 horsepower four door saloon. And um, basically, uh, this is the brand new model. I think there's a facelift model supposed to be appearing towards the end of this year. Maybe this is it, I'm not sure, I haven't asked. All I know it's in my favourite colour which is Misano Blue and it's got yellow calipers and the brand new design of uh, petal alloy wheels which look very nice. They've got uh, like a, I would say, a, um, I don't know how to describe it, like a milled finish. So a diamond cut, that's the phrase. You've got a diamond cut finish. Very nice they are too. The interior is pretty much uh, the same as it was before. Um, it's got the lovely tactile steering wheel. Uh, it's got the, uh, the steering wheel mounted start and stop button. And um, it's pretty nice, I think. Um, I mean, this is in the fairly basic black leather. Um, you can get obviously other finishes and you can get wood trim instead of the aluminium accents or instead of the uh, the, um, the sort of pseudo carbon fiber finish. Uh, the, the next model up from this between this car and the Quadrifoglio is the, uh, the brand new TI version of the Veloce. Now the TI is a badge that's been around for a long time and um, it's been used on several models in the past. Uh, the last model that it was used on was the, the 159 on the Giulia Veloce version of the TI. You get carbon fibre front grille, lovely carbon fibre mirrors, you get the same trim inside the car as is fitted to the Quadrifoglio. So needless to say, that's very tasty. It's got leather, part Alcantara seats. Uh, it's got the, uh, the nice steering wheel. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of carbon fiber accents around the cabin. And uh, the car also gets the five hole Teledial style Quadrifoglio 19 inch wheels too in dark gray. So it looks fabulous. Um, I'll have one of those as well, please. So first impressions of the Veloce, after getting out of a quite heavy car, um, which hopefully one of these Veloces will replace. The, uh, the Veloce, it certainly feels very lively compared to my, uh, my BMW, because my BMW is hybrid car, so it's about 1800 kilos, so it's quite heavy weight. This car weighs a lot less than that. I think it's about 1400, between 1400 and 1500 kilos and uh, with 280 horsepower, rear wheel drive, famous Alfa Romeo uh, pointy and very communicative steering, it's a much more uh, exciting car to drive. I have been warned that uh, Veloces can be a little bit tail happy in the wet. Um, I'm not going to test that out today because the roads are wet or damp and uh, hopefully the sun's supposed to be coming out later today so um, that will dry the roads up a little bit and then I'll feel a little bit more uh, relaxed. It's surprisingly quiet actually at motorway speeds. I'm, uh, I'm doing uh, just over 70 miles an hour and uh, yeah, it's pretty good, it's pretty quiet. It feels quite refined. Um, I was expecting there to be a big difference in the cabin volume between my BM and this one, but um, not a huge difference to be honest. Uh, the engine's quite refined, possibly might even almost be a little bit too muted. This, 
this car, I think personally, is uh, is Alfa Romeo trying to appeal to the middle ground more, while still being an exciting and engaging drive. At the end of the day, people who are interested in driving primarily and creature comfort secondarily, I'm one of those people. You're gonna you're gonna find this car is a lot more interesting and it's a lot more enjoyable to drive than you know the standard fare that you tend to get from Germany. I'm afraid, um, unless of course you move up the grade and you go to an M3 or an M5 or something of, of that sort of nature. But of course, that's a lot more money. It's certainly very comfortable for cruising. The seats, where, while when you first get in, you think, oh, these seats are quite firm. But actually, that's what you want. I've discovered that on long journeys, if you've got a, a car with squashy seats, it's quite often not good. It's um, it, it's not good for your back, and it can mean that you're um, you're actually uncomfortable for a good deal of the journey, and you keep having to get out to move. What's rattling? wasn't the car rattling that was my that was my camera tripod so don't worry about that no rattles in here oh wait there's another one that was my phone <laughs> build quality is very nice I've got no complaints about build, build quality what I was saying about um, car being comfortable to drive one of my little lazy habits is to be able to rest your elbows on either side of the car while you're cruising on the motorway or on a long distance and I have to say for me I mean perhaps if you've got arms like a, like an orangutan then maybe it won't be so comfortable for you but certainly for me my right arm is resting on the door um, the door handle which is nicely padded. My left elbow is resting on the on the lid of the central uh, glove box. That's just right as well. It's just the right height. They're comfortable. They're padded, and it means that you can grip the steering wheel comfortably, and um, it makes it very cosy. Um, yeah, ten out of ten for that. Usually, <laughs> when you're driving a nice car, quite often you get a lot of hate from other road users. Um, most people don't want to let a nice car out of a junction. If you're driving something fancy, like a Porsche or, or a Ferrari, you can forget it. Everybody hates you. Nobody wants to give you any uh, leeway. Nobody wants to let you out. This car, however, I have to say, I've had a very different experience. People seem to be, that well, they, they like it. It seems to be as simple as that. And I've been having people let me out of junctions. I've got people smiling and waving. I've got men in other brands of cars rubbernecking as I go past. That's great. I've just been overtaken by a Skoda with a noisy exhaust. <laughs> hey, and the sun's come out. Ah, you see, the sun shines on the righteous. Oh, a bit of an 
emergency stop. Brakes are nice and progressive. They feel very... No, oh, okay. Thank you. There's a very rude person in a Nissan X-Trail who just cut me up. Effective overtaking right there. Bye bye, Mr. Nissan X Trail. Use history. I have to say, I'm feeling very at home in the Veloce already, and I've only been driving it for half an hour. It really does feel as if I've been driving the car for a lot longer than I have. It feels very natural. I've just stepped into the car. I haven't adjusted the seat. Well, I've, I've adjusted it forwards a little bit. Um, but other than that, the driving position for me is fabulous. It feels like my car already. So I think I might head to the seaside to do a few pictures. And um, it's nothing to do with fish and chips. You understand that? Yeah, you understand that, right? Nothing to do with fish and chips. Fish and chips are sometimes available at the seaside. I understand that. However, that isn't why I'm going to the seaside. <clears throat> Yes. <laughs> Let's go to the beach. Like I said though, nothing to do with fish and chips. Yeah, it's very sweet. The handling is really nice. You feel like you're balanced right at the center of the car. And that's a nice feeling. It's also very easy to be going slightly faster than you think you are. And I, I think that's partly the, the kind of the, the character of the car, which is to uh, egg you on a bit and to sort of encourage you to uh, go around the next bend just that tiny bit faster than the previous bend. Another Alpha there. Cheeky little wave. Oh, um, did I mention that we were going to the beach? I did. Oh, sorry. I had heard that um, they sell fish and chips there. Just a rumour, obviously, but, um, you know, not that I'm interested. almost smell them. Oh, the car, it just feels sweet. It just feels so pointable and planted and responsive. Oh. Get out of the way! It's a Peugeot. Oh, wait. Now, let me think this through. Peugeot, Budley Salterton, I know. There's obviously a garden centre there. So this is my hoped for quiet back road, which actually, uh, surprise, surprise, turns out to be full of Peugeots heading for the Budley Salterton garden centre. Oh, there's another one in front of me now. So in front of me currently I have one, two, three Peugeots. I'm going to have to make my unhappy face. See, this is the thing that I find very difficult to explain to people who aren't really as interested in the experience of driving. People say to me, 
Oh, what is it about Alfa Romeos that's so special? Well, basically you need to drive one, and if you've never driven one, only driving a good one like this will give you that answer, because it boils down to something really basic, which is how the car makes you feel. I don't mean when you're sitting it in a lay-by doing Angry Birds, um, and I don't mean you know when you're commuting to Sainsbury's to get your weekly shop. I'm talking about when you're driving it, and you know you're on the open road. You've got a commute to do, maybe, or you know you're just out for a drive on a Sunday. How the car makes you feel when you drive it, to me, is the most important factor. And life is too short to drive cars that don't make you feel good. It's as simple as that. I spend quite a lot of my time in my car. I have to commute to work. It's about an hour a day at least commute. And obviously I have family commitments at weekends that mean I have to drive to places. So I, I do spend a fair amount of time in the car every week. And to not enjoy the driving when you're forced to do it is... Uh, well, you've only got yourself to blame. <laughs> I've only got myself to blame because I I bought a car that's very nice, but it's not that enjoyable to drive. It's not very fun. It's not exciting. It doesn't make me feel woohoo. Doesn't make me feel like uh, you know, like a hero when I'm out on the back lanes. It doesn't encourage me to drive fast. It encourages me to drive slowly. It encourages me to trundle along and watch the fuel gauge rather than watch the road ahead and listen to my heart beating. That's the reason why I like to drive nice cars. And that is a very long explanation of a very simple thing which is Alfa Romeo's make you feel good. End of story. DC goals.